Perkhaba is an independent carbon emission verification body for the transport sector, aviation, airports and maritime transport. We are independent verification body. We exclusively focus on independent carbon emission for the transport sector. And uh, for the maritime transport, we focus on the EU MRV regulation, the monitoring, reporting and verification regulation of carbon emission of uh, large ships visiting EU ports. We provide the gap analysis, uh, pre-verification, legal verification, certification of IT system and uh, assessment of monitoring plans. EU MRV is a new regulation. It was just voted and passed last July, July 2015. Uh, it has to do with shipping and when somebody is talking about global shipping, Greece is, of course, the number one country in the world, as we speak. Therefore, Verifavia Shipping decided to, to start uh, our HQ in, in, in Athens, Greece, uh, hoping that we expand into a hub for the region in order to be able to service the Greek, the Cypriot, the Middle East and all, the, all these markets, helping them comply and verify and navigate their way into the European ports effective the 1st of January 2019. Well, we launched the Verifier Shipping website uh, on the 1st of July 2015 when the EUMAV regulation came into force. Uh, we started to conduct gap analysis for shipping companies, including uh, in Greek shipping company called Nida Maritime. Uh, which is now can, can now can be considered as being MRV ready. Uh, we perform other gap analysis for companies in uh, uh, Denmark, India and Canada. Uh, we participate in conferences, uh, seminars, exhibitions like Posidonia, which is our first Posidonia. Um, and uh, we, uh, yeah, we focus on uh, uh, educating people, uh, informing ship owners, uh, shipping management companies on the aspects related to the UMV regulation. We try to demystify as much as we can uh, the regulation. Uh, a lot of people talk about the regulation, but uh, few people know what it is about. And it's not rocket science. It's, uh, it's a simple regulation, but it's uh, as information to be to be known. Uh, so we. Uh, we consider ourselves as a point of contact, as a resource center to, uh, for any aspect related to the UMAV regulation and uh, any question, uh, request, uh, uh, information uh, request uh, can be addressed to us. Generally speaking, the, we are basically experts in verifying carbon emissions. We've had our 10,000 hours of practice and therefore we can be considered experts. That's all we do, uh, nothing more, nothing less. And that's why we know how to do best. Well, the gap analysis process is, is quite straightforward, I have to say. You have, on the one hand, you have the EU MRV regulation. On the other hand, you have the existing policies and procedures and ways of collecting data and uh, presenting the data of uh, carbon emissions per vessel for one whole shipping company. So if we consider what the EU MRV regulation would like someone to do and what is actually happening as A and B, then the difference between A and B is actually the gap that we need to bridge in order for the shipping operator to be MRV ready and MRV compliant. Now this has to be done at the very latest by end of 2017 because 2018 is actually the very first official year that any shipping operator will have to monitor and eventually verify in 2019. The two systems are very different. The IMO MRV is actually an IMO MR. Actually, it's called an, a data collection system. Um, and the EU MRV is really an MRV with a focus on the V. Um, the, the system are, are very different. Uh, the, uh, while when the uh, EU MRV uh, focuses on the actual cargo on board, the reporting uh, of the actual cargo on board, IMO MRV only requests uh, shipping companies to report the design dead weight as a proxy of the actual cargo on board. Uh, while uh, the objective of the UMRV is to collect and publish the data, make the data publicly available so that third parties, ship owners, uh, brokers, uh, charterers can uh, look at the data of uh, energy efficiency of uh, ships and uh, compare a ship against uh, energy efficiency of another ship of the same type, uh, the, the data collected under the IMO MRV will actually be 
uh, will not be published. Well, actually, it will be published but anonymized. So it will not be possible to identify uh, which chips uh, has such energy efficiency. Um, the, the V of MRV is a key pillar of the, MR, the EU MRV system. Whereas for the IMO, the key pillar is the, the V is not a key pillar. Like the verification will be under the responsibility of the member state, the flag state, uh, which may mean no verification, which means which may mean some kind of verification, either done internally at the member state level uh, or subcontracted to uh, an independent uh, verification body. This is yet to be seen. So the, the philosophy of both systems are different and the, the principles also are different and the robustness is different. The IUMRV is much more robust than the IMO data collection system. Mm. So it's uh, highly unlikely that the European Commission will decide to align the IUMRV to the IMO data collection system. Probably, probably the second option. Probably the IMO will sort of like align itself towards the IUMRV. Now, from a business perspective, from a process perspective, we are I, I believe everybody is hoping that there will come a point where both will be completely aligned. Because let's not forget, this is not about shipping, this is about carbon. And the way uh, we humans manage and use, use carbon in all industries, shipping of course included. Absolutely they're ready. Absolutely they're ready. And there are many reasons. First and foremost, ship owners are ready for many things other than the EU MRV. They have proven to be resilient and flexible and have an acute sense of a business spirit. Therefore, absolutely they're ready. That's number one. Number two, most of the things that are required by a EU MRV, for most of the cases that we have seen, are already taking place. All we need to do is calm it down, create a structure that is exactly according to the EU MRV regulation, but that doesn't mean we start from scratch. We start from a very, very good baseline. Uh, and we are particularly certain that whether they decide to join us during our daily half-hour masterclasses where we sort of like try to educate everyone on the EU MRV or whether they consult with us privately in their offices, that we realize that EU MRV is not a beast that it has been sort of like designed to be. It's far more easy and a lot of it is already taking place. The only thing we need to do is demystify, explain the details, explain the process and just go and do it. We help by looking at the company's procedures, data collection systems, IT system they use, the way they collect the data, transfer the data, store the data, extract the data, which data they use to make the calculation, the fuel consumption calculation, calculate transport work, calculate the emissions. We look at the, the procedures, their measurement equipment, and we compare what they do with what the, requ the regulation requires them to do. Mm -hmm. We identify the gaps, and we tell them what the gaps are, then they have time to undertake corrective actions, which may, which mean, which may mean uh, um, change in the IT system, or uh, introduce a new data to be collected, or introduce a new source, primary source, source record, uh, change of procedures, update of a system, exactly. whatever it is. And then once uh, they have undertaken the, the corrective action in order to close the gaps, if they can produce an emission a monitoring plan that describes the procedures in place, to monitor and report the fuel consumption, emissions, and transport work. If they can produce an emission report that's for a NMRV representative ship, at least one emission report, and if it's the emission report is prepared according to the requirements of the regulation, then we consider this company to be MRV ready. Because if a company can prepare a monitoring plan for one ship, if it, if it can prepare uh, an emission report for one ship, it means that he can prepare a monitoring plan and emission report for all its fleet. So it can be considered to be MRV ready. And what is MRV ready? MRV, MRV ready. ready. Is that if we started tomorrow, if the regulation started tomorrow, they would be able to do it instantly. That's MRV ready. And there, there, are, there are many advantages to be MRV ready sooner Absolutely. rather than later. Uh, the competitive advantage can promote the fact that the company is MRV ready to the third parties, uh, client, partners, uh, authorities. Uh, 
avoid the MRV bottleneck that will probably occur next year when 12,000 ships will have to be assessed uh, during a very short period of time. Uh, have time to take the corrective action if, if required. Have time to practice. Have time to practice. Because in instances where new procedures are being established, as humans we tend to do, we need to test it a couple of times and get used to it so that they're ready during 2018. 2018 is the first year that they will need to actually monitor and review and verify. Yes. So the sooner you do it, uh, the better results you will have. There, there's also a saying for that, practice makes perfect. So they have ample time to actually practice internally and re-correct any mistakes that they themselves identify, which is even better than having us identify. Start now. There's no need to wait until next year. Almost 100% of the technical details of the regulation have been defined, either legally or at working group level. And there is enough information available to start MRV tomorrow. There's informa enough information for ship owners to start preparing a monitoring plan and preparing an emission report for at least one of their ships tomorrow. There's enough information for verifiers to verify an emission report, to verify companies' procedures against the regulation or to, set, to assess a monitoring plan. And there is even enough information for national accreditation bodies to provide the accreditation to verifiers. So it's possible to start tomorrow. There's no need to wait until August 2017. So that's the key message. Start tomorrow, build up the MRV system on existing infrastructure. Exactly. Most of the data is already there, already exists, already, is already being collected through the noon report, the bachelor report, the rival report. If IT they decide to opt exactly for an IT system, they have ample time to do their due diligence, which IT system, why, what for, blah, 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 instead of making a you know, swift, ad hoc decision. So, all in all, we've, we've already discussed about five, six, seven different reasons. Therefore, I mean, I would have started early. <laughs>